Well, this is the, it's Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. This is the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting. Um, there are no members of the public that we're aware of, so no public comment. And um, actually, you do have one raised hand for oh. public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, George Hello. Kohak. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is George Cohart. I live on State Street and I'm on the planning board. And I just thought I would eavesdrop a little bit on your conversation about the form based code. Um, I don't know if you're planning on coming to the, the Thursday night meeting also with the planning board, but I thought I'd get a little glimpse on how you folks thought about um, some of these changes that we'll be looking at. So I'm just going to be eavesdropping. I hope I don't, uh, you know, cause any kind of consternation on your side. But thank you for letting me join you. Okay. Where's the rest of the public? Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be at the Thursday meeting, possibly. Um, so this meeting is to review the proposed draft of the form based code for downtown Northampton. Um, and Carolyn, I, I thought, um, I, I know you sent it out to us over the weekend and I briefly reviewed it, but do you want to give the committee a summary or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't, um, so, you know, we've talked about this um, idea of changing both the guidelines and talked about the context of the form-based code for its three and a half years now. There was a little break because of COVID, but um, uh, what I thought I would do, I'm going to do more of a formal presentation in front of the planning board for the big public forum, but I thought it would be um, helpful. And so I don't have that same kind of thing for you all, because I think you would be interested in more of the, the meat of the matter and sort of getting into the nitty gritty of where these are. So I'd be I, where the guidelines sort of match up to this form based code and how it all would work together and the changes and that kind of thing. So I'd like to go over um, those, but I just want to sort of backtrack and give the background again. In uh, the summer of 2018, we started this process. We hired Dodson Flinker to help us look at form based code. You all at the time had just sort of gone through a revision looking at changes to the guidelines to update them. They hadn't been really touched in about 20 years. Um, so that was put on hold. And then through um, the summer and fall, or actually fall of 2018, there were lots, there were several public forums, both in downtown Florence with the Florence Civic and Business Association with stakeholder groups, uh, business owners, property owners in Florence, as well as in Northampton. There were meetings with you, a central business um, committee. Um, you may remember through 2019 as well. Um, we were still in person at that time, if you can, reach back in the memory bank for that. Um, we had separate meetings. Um, the consultants did separate meetings as well with the chamber um, and the DNA. Um, and then there was sort of this pause that we couldn't really control. Um, and then we sort of regrouped last year and in November and December went back to both um, to have a public forum virtually with um, Florence and Florence Civic and Business in, invites and Florence residents, and then a separate meeting for with um, about downtown. Um, we had intended to move an ordinance forward through the spring of 2021. It just didn't happen. So now this is sort of um, we finally have gotten sort of a really close um, final draft from the consultants that is almost ready to be put forward in terms of a zoning package to city council. Um, but we wanted to have this forum as sort of a last bite before it gets introduced because it's much easier to change language and think about issues before it goes in front of city council and then the planning board where then you actually need to make formal amendments through each of these committees. Um, so we thought it'd be a good idea to sort of get the last bit of information from folks before that um, and then introduce it formally to council maybe in March this year and get it moving forward. 
the key points, so just focusing on downtown Northampton, the key points which I'll um, um, want to talk about are um, the boundary changes and sort of the rethinking about um, downtown in terms of regulations and then some specific uses and then just sort of how the form-based code is structured for the applicability of these rules and how it relates to the Central Business Architecture Committee's role and, um, and the, the changing role of that and sort of the focus. So um, I guess before I launch into the, the map piece of it, are there any questions about process and what we're gonna look at? Um, I was wondering, is this going to be complementing uh, the central business district guidelines or is it going to be in place of? So a really good question. Um, we view it as a complement in addition to because it not only deals with the private building side, but also the public streetscape and um, it's separates jurisdiction a little bit and, and identifies sort of Central Business Architecture Committee as as trying as basically one stop shopping for most things in the core business district and then planning board one stop shopping for other um, areas in the downtown. And <clears throat> um, in addition, your current guidelines address things that aren't allowed to be addressed in zoning, like materials. And even though it doesn't address color, you can think about color contrast as being affecting the visual appearance of something and sort of tones and that kind of thing, which you can't do in zoning. So it's, it's important to keep um, guide, some guidelines and jurisdiction of Central Business Architecture Committee outside of that um, chapter 40A, which is the State Zoning Act. Chapter 148. So is this, um, we, we're still gonna have a say over things that happen outside the core, aren't we? Or is that being removed from our jurisdiction? <sighs> well, the proposal is to put the review outside the core into um, the planning board. Um, but with guidelines that are in there that sort of um, are, are similar, but it, it then sort of streamlines the review for the planning board um, and gives some more certainty to applicants about the process. And um, the planning board has a lot, this is built, there are a lot of built in um, guidelines that can be waived by the planning board depending on the certain context of, of things or situations on the site um, or a, a specific site. So the idea is to um, create specific enough standards that the planning board can follow outside of the core and that it just goes to the planning board. So, the, so um, for instance, if St. John Cantius came up out after this um, zoning thing was introduced, we wouldn't have a hearing about that. Right. Because you wouldn't have a hearing about that. And then it also, because it's not in the CB core, it probably would bring in any request for any request for demolition review for buildings outside the core then, outside of CBAC jurisdiction, would also have an added element of historic commission. We'd have to, we have to write that, we have to modify the, that part of the code too, um, which leads me to just briefly say that this change, this change in concept for the downtowns is going to require over 20 different ordinance amendments to city council. So it's gonna be a, a big package, not just of the things I sent you, but of 18 other little things that are in various different parts of the code. And one of those would be, for example, clarifying 
where the historical commission's jurisdiction is because of the shift. Is it possible that when the new zoning law goes into effect that we would be given a demolition delay as, as part of our toolbox of things that we could do? Um, no, in that's not on it. That's not being discussed. Is, is it something that could be discussed? Um, well, it could be, uh, anybody can raise anything for discussion. However, um, the whole focus of Central Business Architecture Committee and the guidelines is not about historic preservation per se. It's really about the preservation of the of downtown as a vibrant center and understanding that some buildings might need to change. And so it's a very different review from what the historical commission lens is. Um, so I know from, I, certainly from our office's perspective, we wouldn't recommend that as a change to move forward because of that. Um, we necessarily, I mean, the creation of the committee and the guidelines was specifically not just about historic preservation um, well, just for, for instance, solely. Just if, if, it, if somebody bought the Silverscape building and decided that that building was just, you know, it'd be great for a bank or it'd be great for a big restaurant, but it's, it's just not well suited for anything that um, is, is, uh, useful in today's economy. So we'd like to demolish it and put up a five-story apartment, you know, mix apartment retail building. Um, and I would, and we, it would fall under our purview, but, but um, we wouldn't, and I'd, I'd like to have something to say about demolition in a situation like that, if that came before <clears throat> us, just for the sake of example. Yeah, I mean, I think there's certainly, you can talk about the section that deals with demolition for landmark buildings. I would say that would, um, I'm just trying to think how we've classified that. I think it's a landmark building, but, um, um, but I also would say, I'm not sure that demolition delay is necessarily an effective tool. Um, I think maybe more specific criteria about what needs to be proven for demolition is um, might be an effective um, approach. Um, but certainly there hasn't, you know, the demolition delay to the, you know, it's been in place for what, 20 some years and there really hasn't been anything that's been protected um, under that with the use of that. I mean, it's basically a waiting game um, till you can demolish something. So I, I think there might be other ways to address that and to apply pressure for people to really think harder before they come forward with a request for demolition. You know, it appears that, you know, going through these new guidelines, I was reading through them, I think it's going to make our job easier because I think a lot of these new guidelines are a lot more specific than our guidelines, uh, with the exception of, like you said, maybe materials, but like the building articulation, window placements, and all that is, I think, isn't it much more specific than the, what's in our guidelines? Um, I think to us, it was... I think it's maybe clearer and in specific that way. And also, um, um, and the point was really to make it more, um, I don't know if making, I guess that's not the right way to say it. I was gonna say that we're, the hope was that this would be clear for any applicant across the board, you know, what would be expected of them. Um, but, I'm just trying to think back to big projects. Typically with big projects, or new buildings, you know, you have um, very skilled and experienced architects who know how to read 
the guidelines anyway. So maybe it doesn't matter so much for those kinds of projects, but for maybe the smaller projects, I think, yes. Like that building we approved next to Whalen's there on mm -hmm. King Street. I mean, I think that probably still follows all of these new guidelines, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does. I would say our hope was that they wouldn't necessarily have to, they could find other ways to do that. Because I think the what we were trying to differentiate is that there are different characteristics in different parts of downtown and we want to encompass and allow lots of intensity of uses in sort of a broader area of downtown, but at the same time understand that not every block has to be a replacement or an expansion of Main Street and Pleasant and King right at that sort of main intersection where Silverscape is um, and to allow uh, more fluidity and in interpretation, cl more clear allowances for interpretation of those things. Um, and, but I would say that um, because you pushed the applicants so much on the, your existing guidelines, I think, yes, they do match what the guidelines currently, um, you know, require because, you know, you were, you um, held them to that standard. So, um, and hopefully they're moving forward. We haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> I, um, I, I think one of the things that's important, and I don't know that anyone has taken the time or, or if this committee is being tasked with this. Um, there are, I think like Bob was saying, there's a lot of things that are similar in our guidelines to what are in their guidelines and that, um, I always like the concept of uh, say it in one place. And so that there isn't confusion of, uh, you know, the guideline says this and the form-based code says this, which one am I supposed to follow? Right. And so that there's just real clarity. And even if there are diagrams that are similar, that maybe we use the same diagrams yep. um, and language. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that just takes somebody taking the time to come through our guidelines and come through the form based code and say, okay, we're going to change our guidelines to match this language and um, graphic. Yeah. Well, one of the things I would like to do tonight, if you are all willing, is sort of um, put the two documents up side by side and the ones that are really. Um, that's best that are in the form based code that say here are the specific guidelines that will be reviewed by CBAC because there is a section like that and you know put the guidelines up and and see what you think about sort of copying and pasting from one to the guidelines so there's one document that you all can use for the guidelines. Um, uh, that will be sort of the building guidelines and then the rest of the stuff can be about the site and that kind of stuff can stay so um you know it um after we go through the map maybe i can pull that up okay. if that works for you guys mm -hmm. okay um all right should i go ahead and put the map up and sort of sure. look at that okay okay so can you see lots of pink in your screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let me zoom. Um, I, oops. Okay, so I think maybe this is a little oriented a little bit horizontal, like not north to south, <laughs> which um, kind of throws me off, but I'll, I'll just walk through this and I'll zoom in on different areas. So just quickly, this dark pink is what we're calling CB core right now. And I'll come back to that um, in a second, but I'll start up on King Street just so you know, but generally, um, basically all the area in pink is proposed to become sort of this commercial downtown district. And currently 
it's primarily comprised of three zoning districts, although we have a little bit of office industrial sprinkled in on the edges of downtown that we would pull into more of this um, um, retail commercial district. But so I guess that means, and then there's a little bit of urban residential C, which is residential district that we would also pull in. And I'll go through those little bits and tell you, but basically that means there are five, currently there are five zoning districts um, that are shown in these various shades of pink under the current zoning. And the idea would be to take all of those and create three zoning districts. Um, all sort of under this umbrella of central business. And so um, we'd have a central business gateway, which would address the north uh, along King Street corridor and the south coming in from the roundabout on Pleasant Street. And then we'd have side street, CB side street, and then we'd have the CB core. So starting up um, on King up King Street, just to get you, oh, sorry, just to get you oriented, this area that's outlined in red is currently what we refer to as entrance business, which is a sort of our stopgap or band aid um, gateway district. And it starts at the bike path um, just south of Stop and Shop and runs along the King Street corridor on both sides of King Street down to um, Summer Street, which the best way to describe it is where Dunkin' Donuts is. <laughs> so that corner, the one Summer North where right now there's construction, um, we have this um, streetscape improvement project that's happening right here along this section. So this would be brought in as a central business gateway, this lightest pink. Um, and Essentially, the you what changes is then now we can have design guidelines, which we don't currently have for entrance business. We just have basic setbacks and parking location requirements in entrance business. Um, but this would then apply building standards and that the planning board would review would be responsible for reviewing these, but they would have more tools to review them so that um, there would be a little bit more um, um, uh, ability to create um, a pedestrian streetscape environment with buildings pulled up close to the street, parking in the back um, and building facades sort of oriented in a way that is um, more geared towards creating that walkable um, space. Um, so then moving towards downtown um, along King Street, currently this area where from Dunkin' Donuts down to um, basically um, the courthouse, uh, 33 King Street, the cinder block box that was is also on discussion for Thursday, is currently central business. Um, and this would be, um, so this area and it wraps behind, so there's a bit of Gothic street, almost up to Trumbull that central business, um, and all of these sort of supporting side streets to downtown, we'd keep, we'd put into what we were calling central business side street. And the primary difference here is that, um, we think from a from a land use standpoint, it makes sense to allow ground floor residential. We don't currently allow that because central business architect central business zoning is intended to keep that street front sidewalk facing um, interface to be commercial and active um, with um, retail. The focus is really on retail and. Um, we know for years and years that retail, um, local retail has been fading and shrinking. And uh, we also know that we have uh, housing um, needs and demands and that housing 
helps support a commercial core. Um, so restaurants, retail, they can really be concentrated in the historic sort of portion of Northampton. So we think it's important to have a slightly different zoning classification here, um, primarily to be a little bit more relaxed in design guidelines, still have those design guidelines, but had them uh, reviewed by the planning board, but also to allow a different type of use um, and allow multifamily on the ground floor. And if you can think about it, there are a lot of these properties that are already residential. They were um, transitional residential is the way they're referred to in um, building classification under your jurisdiction now. And so they were historically residential structures, but now they're essentially the ones that haven't converted to office um, <laughs> are non-conforming essentially from a zoning perspective. This would then create conformance with land use um, requirements, but it also allows potentially expansion of um, those residential uses on the property, to which could then have a beneficial um, effect on the commercial viability for downtown. Um, these red outline um, areas, this is Edward Square, and you all may know that we recently um, added an on-ramp, off-ramp to the, to the bike path back here that drops down to North Street. And so this little neighborhood here is urban residential C, but it's also surrounded by commercial. And um, we think that making this commercial eliminates um, um, setbacks, and lot size requirements for building. So if you wanted to add units in this area on a property, you could do that. Whereas under the current zoning, you can't really do that. And we think that it makes sense to allow, if over time property owners want to do that, that this might be an area where we could, you know, have additional residential units sort of on the downtown side of the, tr of the railroad tracks there. Um, the same is true for Allen Place. You probably um, can visualize the residential structures on Allen Place. There's some brick Victorians on this side. Um, that yeah. is urban residential C, and that didn't really make sense to maintain that be their, their commercial uses anyway. Um, so then moving along um, this core area that would remain CB core, would remain in central business architecture's jurisdiction with those guidelines that then we can go over in details in detail in a few minutes. But um, I'll just mark it out. So this is Market Street. So that essentially first half block of Market Street. Um, and then over on the other side where Spoleto is that corner. Um, and then going under the bridge um, all along sort of all the parcels fronting Main Street and a couple, one parcel deep on the west, on the north side, I guess that is. Um, and then of course this whole block, Strong Avenue around sort of um, buffered by the bike path um, here uh, would be the core and fronting along Pleasant Street up to Main Street and sort of these first row deep of buildings. Um, whereas the back side would be side street. So again, it would allow ground floor residential and uses that um, don't necessarily need to be vibrant and active on the main street because they're sort of tucked back behind the, the um, street facing properties. Um, and then sort of, again, going up, going down Crafts Avenue to the bottom of the hill and then up to State Street. Um, and all the properties fronting State Street. This um, white block is Pulaski Park. So that's already permanently protected as the park. That's why it's pulled out. Um, this is the Academy of Music. So that would be sort of the edge. And then, um, as you know, I just, um, many of you have been on the board for um, a number of years. Remember that we've gradually expanded the Central Business District along the way and the guidelines have gone with them, but a, like State Street is a good example of where that's happened. And it's pulled in more transitional residential building that to um, where there are currently many waivers available for that kind of architecture anyway. 
Um, but the uses would be, were sort of non-conforming when they came in, those houses that were still residential. Some of them were commercial, like real estate offices and law offices. But at any rate, this whole section would go to the side street district and allow more flexibility of uses back there, to, again, to sort of support that core commercial area. Um, and the same would be for the area out um, Elm Street to West Street, which in encompasses Forbes Library. And then this is the Smith College Garage, I think is the last piece there. And then across the street, of course, at that corner of West and um, Green Street, where the um, one story markets are. Um, then going, um, let's just go over to Holly Street for a minute. Um, there are some urban residential C um, properties on the west side of Holly Street that are sandwiched between existing commercial districts. So to, um, again, we don't envision the residential uses changing, um, but this would be allowed in the side street district. And also it could allow more units to be created on those properties if it were desired and if they could fit them. Um, then you get going down Holly Street, you get to where the shoe fix place was, um, and it's all kind of um, sort of nice, I don't know what era, mid-century, one-story block buildings at the back of the property. That's all zoned industrial, so again, bring that into the commercial district because it doesn't really make sense to have an industrial zone right there. It's probably more compatible with the neighborhood to have allow sort of a higher density residential anyway. There's some other physical constraints in this area. Um, there's a large uh, storm sewer that runs across these properties, along the property. So that's really been the constraint for redevelopment of these lots, but that might be solved one day. <laughs> um, and then going down Pleasant Street, this area is back to general business. So the darker pink here is currently central business. And then as you go south, this is general business anyway right now. Um, but we bring this into the Gateway Corridor District. And again, it allows, it in, introduces design criteria that aren't currently there and allows for more flexibility of use, ground floor residential, again, to um, uh, which we think is probably more appropriate and probably something that will be um, fit the economic demands um, rather than ground floor commercial necessarily throughout this whole area. And then there are a few places of office industrial as well in here that we would pull into the commercial um, uh, zone. Um, and that takes us down to, oops, I meant to go down. That basically takes us down to the roundabout, um, you know, where the um, hotel um, and Gazette building are. Why is the right avenue uh, area whited out? <laughs> Good question. Um, that's currently urban residential C. And we weren't sure if we were quite ready to go there and converting all of those residential units to commercial. Um, we haven't had a, um, a neighborhood discussion about that. Um, you may recall that um, there was a rezoning for um, Netta asked for this last parcel um, down here on the corner to be rezoned to commercial because they built a parking lot to support their um, um, retail building here. Um, and so there was support for that from the neighborhood, but I, there, there was also concern about encroaching further into that block. It may be something that we revisit, but that's why that's there now. And frankly, that's why many of these other sort of pockets along here that are white. These are all urban residential C zoned properties. So um, we aren't necessarily trying to rezone this whole um, section of the city at this time. I think that takes a, a little bit more in-depth conversation. 
So let me just zoom out a little bit. Um, any questions about that? Any more questions about the map? I have a comment about it. I think that um, the core should go a fair amount farther up King Street. I would, I, this would take the new project um, uh, uh, at Pat Goggins' property out of our purview, and it would take the new whatever happens to the registry out of our purview. And those are, and I, I feel that um, there's a good chance that as King Street develops over time, it'll take on more of the characteristics of the core and that the zoning should reflect that. And I, um, I would want to have the ability to weigh in on, and I would want our committee to have the ability to weigh in on projects. That so, some, maybe not all the way up to Summer, Summer Street, but, but um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the core go all the way up to Summer Street along King Street. Otherwise, I think it's a reasonable um, change. So just I'll remember on that note that these the guidelines that we'll, we'll walk through, um, there are specific ones that are for the core, but there are other ones that are applicable throughout this area as well. And so it would, it, what it really means is the planning board is reviewing it. And um, um, so that over time, there may be sort of more um, buildings that are taller and more um, uh, replace these one story buildings, which we actually would encourage. Um, however, that doesn't mean there won't be design review or um, character requirements for those, um, uh, those right. blocks. So given, given our committee's specific mission, which is to preserve the kind of character that Northampton now has, um, and I think it makes sense to, um, for us rather than the planning board to have um, purview going up King Street because you know we're, we're specifically focused on aesthetics and the planning board really isn't focused on aesthetics. And I, I, think, it's, I think it would be very appropriate to have um, buildings going up string, King Street come under our purview. Can we look at it all the way? Uh, I think it's the peach area that you're referring to, right, Joe? Well, it's it only goes it, it, it this doesn't this only goes up to the hotel, I think, and and across the street it doesn't even get to the hotel. So, so let's it, go it all the way. Cover, to, it would not cover the replacement for the registry building, which I is such is going to be such an important project. I I think it would be very useful to have our committee be able to weigh in on what that's going to look like and what's going to go where Pat Goggin's office is now. Now I you know I think going all the way up to the to the church is is really um, you know that's that's still can you all see the, can you all see the Google Earth? Very short walk from Main Street up to where yeah. um, Pat Goggin's office is. It's you know you're going much farther down Pleasant Street um, and uh, I, I think it, you know, and it, it makes sense to have that be part of the core, I think. So this I is I, um, at least at least a little bit more than, than what it is currently, especially with the registry building that does still feel very much downtown. Where is it currently? Where do we currently go to? Um, all to um, let me go back. So Merrick Lane is the, is be even. You're not even the Calvin is in the is in the core. Merrick Lane is on the uh, south uh, south. Yeah, the Calvin. Calvin is. Yeah, it's that's where the Calvin is. Is right on the yeah. corner there. Yeah. Oh, so all right. that's the lane between the registry and the Calvin. Right. Okay. Her, the what's okay. on the map shown, so you guys can see the street view here. No, we're still looking at the pink map. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so um, I'm just going to show, oops. Uh, 
Um, so that's the edge as shown. Can you see Street View now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is where on the so on the um, west side the hotel is still in that dark pink, and but this property is not. And then after this property is when it sort of really drops down to um, more anomaly buildings and transitional residential. But I, I, I hope, I would hope as the downtown expands, if it's going to expand, that we would want to encourage core type building in that area. And um, I, it, the certainly whatever replaces the registry, you know, is going to be an integral part of downtown. And it's going to be, it's very close to the main intersection in town. And, and I think it's going to be very useful for us to have a say over what happens there. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a say over what happens to uh, Pat Goggins property also. Because yeah. I, I think- Well, that one's I already been permitted, so. <laughs> well, well, but I, you know, I think the planning board, the likelihood that the planning board would have weighed in on, the, on their proposal the way that we did is, is not that great. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't go to planning board meetings, but it's, you know, this is, this is, and our specific mission is what does the downtown look like? And, and these properties are so close to the main intersection of, of downtown that they should be included in the core district. So just um, up until this point, the planning board has not had the tools to look at these specific designs, but that's the whole point of creating this form-based code. So they do have similar tools to the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, so they would have that ability then to look at buildings um, uh, that in a way that they have not previously. If you're gonna argue that, then you might as well argue to get rid of our committee and have the planning board take up the whole thing. Well, no, I mean, I think, and, and remember as well that this originally the central business district was um, uh, just a little bit bigger than this dark pink to start with. But over the last 22 years, we've expanded that central business boundary to incorporate these. So it's not, uh, the idea isn't, you know, to, um, eliminate the jurisdiction, the idea is really to look at that the original focus was about the that sort of historic character and design for that core section of downtown, the central business district grew. And um, so I think, I think it makes sense, uh, particularly on um, the margins, if it makes sense to add sort of fill in a block, like, you know, this really sort of the hotel sticks out a little bit like a finger. <laughs> um, so, you know, tying it across the street, I can see makes sense. Um, however, the, the I, I mean, this area of King Street was more recently rezoned central business. And I don't disagree that the idea is to encourage that kind of intensity of downtown development. But I think giving the planning board the tools to evaluate that and allow for those same type of um, design um, review and um, make sense. But it also uh, clarifies that this is a different character of downtown. It's not like uh, Main Street where all the buildings are right up to the front lot lines and there's many places where there are no, you know, buildings touch each other to the sides as well. And that's probably not what's going to happen on King Street when buildings get rebuilt. There'll be more spacing between the buildings. But the guidelines that they're presenting to us or those tools will actually require a lot of those buildings to be much more visually compatible to what we have now, right? Right, right. So if you were to take this, um, obviously, if there were, if we were to change the zoning and the central business um, architecture committee's jurisdiction to just this core area, 
without having those um, additional form-based code requirements, I think that would be that would be a dramatic change. Um, uh, and so, I, um, you know, I just wanted to emphasize that the idea is really to create more tools um, for the planning board, but by also acknowledging that this is a different character from the original intent of the creation of the Central Business Architecture Committee and the geographic area that was originally drawn for that, for the committee's jurisdiction. And Carolyn, did, where did it originally go? Where did our district end on King Street specifically? Um, I guess what I'm getting at is I, I agree with yep. Joe that it seems like it's a little weird that only um, the Hotel Northampton is included on King Street or up uh -huh. to the Hotel Northampton. It feels like it should extend further. I don't yeah. know that it has to go all the way up to Summer Street, but it just feels lopsided in terms of, you know, that the King Street, Main Street, Pleasant Street intersection is the what I would say is the main intersection. And there's a lot of community events that happen around there. Um, it just feels like it's a little uh, lopsided right now and there should be more. Okay. More along King Street. Yeah, I just don't know where it is, but it should definitely be equal to where the hotel is. Okay. If, if not a little bit further. Okay. I just wanna know what the justification was for stopping it where it was and where did it go previously and where is a logical place to yeah draw the I line. think I think for this area I think the idea was you had the alley this Merrick Lane um as a um a divider and the uh, you know the character of this building and the remaining buildings are so different that using the alley as the demarcation seemed to make sense. But, you know, if, um, uh, but that's what this conversation is about. You know, does it make sense to come and at least flank King Street on both sides, you know, so that you've got sort of a, um, uh, a complementary side of the street that um, is still within the core? Um, you know, that's definitely, um, uh, I can totally understand that. That makes sense. Yeah, especially um, considering the registry okay. building is, could definitely might be changed. And I right. think that oh, hopefully it's open. changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see the court at least go up to Allen Place. It's not that, you know, it, it's not that huge an addition. It's still, it's still, um, accomplishes most of what you're trying to do, but it keeps us involved in what happens on King Street in the area that's really close to the main intersection in town. And I, I really think that as, as we go forward, we really need to have a voice that's looking out for what do these buildings, what, when we get new buildings here, what do they look like? And we want to have them feel like you're still downtown when you're so close to downtown. Whereas uh, if we don't have purview over them, then they're more likely to feel like something else. And uh, I, I, I think it's, you know, I, I assume this isn't written in stone yet. That's why you're meeting with us. So I, I would strongly advise, and I, it seems like people are uh, in agreement with me that um, you at least think about taking the, the core on both sides of King Street up to Allen Place. Yeah, the only, I, I, the only concern I have about that is really sort of the underlying uses. And I don't know that there's enough commercial um, demand for sort of that ground floor retail presence. Um, and that's the really big distinction, you know, going all the way to Allen Place. So let's say- Could you put you your know, cursor Ernie's, 
I'm sorry. Could you put your cursor on Alan Place so I can get? Yeah, I'll zoom in too. I, I can't see it on the screen. Um, it's right here where oh, this okay, red right. box is. Right. Yeah. And then I can just, you know, we can look at the King Street corridor to um, look at that. Um, just going to go here. Sorry. Um, so. Um, you know, gas station, obviously, um, these are currently commercial. Um, but we know that demand for that kind of commercial has just, especially in COVID, has dropped way off. And so this is this is the last structure before Allen Place. Do you see this Green Street sign? That's Allen Place. Right. Um, right here. So um, Wayland Insurance. Um, and Ernie's Garage, which, you know, is never going to go away <laughs> because everybody needs Ernie's Garage. <laughs> um, so. Well, you don't know that it's never going to go away. I mean, things change. Um, the, I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, one, one hopes that um, uh, people will, um, that, that the demand for, for commercial space downtown will um, come back. But uh, we really, I'm mean, within two blocks of the main intersection. We really want it to look like downtown and we wanna, we wanna have a say on what these new buildings are gonna look like. And I mean, it is everything that you pointed out is, is, is uh, first floor commercial. There's only one floor, but it is first floor commercial along King Street. Um, so I can I can see Joe's argument. I guess I wonder, does it say if if it's not within central business that you can't have commercial on the first floor beyond this point? Um, so it says it. Um, there's a what's referred to as a ground floor use limitation. So the first 20 feet um, have to be commercial. So you have to have at least this sliver of commercial um, along the street front, but then back deeper in, you could have residential and above you can have residential. So in the gateway district, which is what it's proposed to be, you still have to have commercial. Um, no, in this in the side street district, which is the next one before Gateway, um, you have to um, you can have ground floor residential or commercial, and you can have residential above uh, as well. And then is is that part of our jurisdiction, the central business side street? No. No. Oh, no. Carol, but I'm many of the same you. guidelines are then are written in so that the planning board would then be reviewing them within that same context. We're not we're not going to decide this tonight, but I I don't think. But I'm I'm hoping that the 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 boundaries of the core are not totally set in stone. That's why you came to us to talk about this, right? right. So you can go back to your you can go back to. Wayne and the other members of your department and 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 rethink it a little bit and see if it might make sense to take it farther up towards Allen place but and we could I don't I don't we could move on to something else now but I okay. I hope it's something that you're going to reconsider as you um, as you look at this issue yeah and give it a second thought yeah, I think I think as part of that discussion it's important to talk about the sort of what you call the view shed from the core of downtown Northampton and, and what do we it's not just about arriving in the center of Northampton it's about what you see from the center of Northampton and how we want to draw people further out of the center um I mean you know like Ernie's and that store next to Ernie's by the hotel there I mean those would become very valuable pieces of property if they became av available 
and they would definitely warrant multi-story, you know, four or five story developments that would be mixed use. You know, so I think we should have some say over the, the look of those. Right. And, and if, that they still central, would... if they were, excuse me, if they were in central business, then they would have to have at least they would have to have the first floor commercial. Right. Right. And they'd still have the height, you know, there'd still be the minimum 30 foot height um, and 70 foot maximum, even as the side street district, but um, it would still allow multifamily, a multifamily structure um, as opposed to central business, which we don't allow multifamily, you know, from the ground up. Right. But you would then have, if that area was central business, it would be, it would be allowed to have what is it, 55 or 60 foot height allow, allowable? 70. 70, rather yeah. than 35, which oh. would lend it more to the visual aspects of the central business district. Well, actually this section, the side street, uh, goes up to 70 feet as well. So there wouldn't be that dramatic oh, difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> But we can, we'll definitely take a look at that and with the comments about sort of thinking about it as the view shed coming into downtown and sort of how to um, create that transition. And maybe Carolyn, you can describe how you got the timber frame building to um, issue a permit or how you issued the permit to them. Like that was a special use case, it seemed. So even the, even though it didn't fall into our jurisdiction, you still got they still had to apply it for a central business architecture permit, correct? It's currently in our district. Yeah, it's currently in our district. But if this change happens, it would not be in our district. Oh, so that's not the. Got it. So that's kind of what Joe is it's saying. Is that that. If, if this change yeah, happens. We wouldn't have purview over similar developments on King Street beyond Calvin no, no. or or Hotel Northampton. Okay. So I think it needs to extend up a little bit further on King Street, where that where that line is. Where Allen Street is. Well, I, I guess I would go back to the city and. Have them decide. But just an emphasis that this committee feels it should go further up King Street. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So do you want to look at the text a bit more? Yeah. You leaving okay. us, George? Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Okay. Um, and so you're I saying, Carolyn, you want to go through the guidelines now? Is that what yeah? Is, does that make sense? So you guys ready to do that? Or mm -hmm. okay. Um, and I was just looking quickly. Um, okay. Let's see. Um. All right, so I was hope, and I think what I'll start with is um, I'll just flip through um, the first part of the document. Oh gosh, I'm trying to find my revised CV. Okay, so, okay. Um, let me go up to, screen share. Okay, can you see the code on here? I'm gonna zip up to the top of the document, okay? So close your eyes while it zips. <laughs> right. um, okay, so, um, so we have this, so just roughly the way it's organized, you'll see sort of how planning board will also have these criteria, but there's there's um, sort of the public realm side, the street side, and there's the building um, side. So um, 
the, this section, new section 21, would be a lot about the public realm and then go into specifics about, um, you know, a, a lot about the zoning, the public realm, and then go into building um, designs and um, what the process could be if there's um, sort of if an applicant wants to do something different than within the guidelines, it would be special permit as opposed to just site plan by the planning board. Um, and then there's this building section that goes through the details about orientation, roofs, facade, fenestration. So those came, I mean, basically we took, um, Dodds and Flinker took the, your guidelines to as the sort of the starting point um, in building this. So um, um, it really was um, a large part of this um, um, framework. And then there are landscaping standards for the site. Um, and uh, then again, sort of more detailed of the public realm components. Um, and then it goes into what each district is and sort of the concept behind each district. And then a lot about parking and how really parking and driveway access is really to be relegated to the back. There's some, um, and, and no new driveways are allowed in the core district because we really are trying to um, ensure that it's a, um, a pedestrian zone and not creating new conflict points um, in that area. So, and then there's a the whole section on Florence. So just going back to the building, I'm gonna zip from here. Um, and by the way, when you're looking through this, I don't know if you noticed, but these are um, links to the actual sections. So if you, um, so this is the building section. So I'm just gonna click and go to that um, page right. building. So um, <laughs> yeah, so as you're going through this, if you have more comments, you know, just know that you have that as a tool. Um, so, um, this is the applicability about the buildings and the building orientation, and um, then references the central business guidelines for the core areas. Um, and then there's a it um, uh, there's building heights and step backs, um, and more details. So this gets to your point, Bob, about sort of more details about building elevation and relating buildings on the site. Um, some of this has been informed by projects that didn't turn out so as perfectly as people would have liked. Um, some in Florence, some downtown, um, because um, the board or even Central Business Architecture wasn't looking at some of these um, standards. So in particular in Florence, you guys don't have jurisdiction, so you weren't. Um, and again, sort of all this is about framing the street. And um, so I'm just going to get to, um, so these standards are for the planning board as well, roof standards, um, and talking about sort of the different types and, and minimizing visibility of roofs, um, facades and dividing up facades. Um, and I'm just scrolling quickly through here because then the next section is really where it talks about, you know, and in the core district, these in particular are sort of more mandatory than um, strict compliance with the other um, guidelines. Um, but a lot about blank walls um, and then just the different types of storefronts. You know, Carolyn, I noticed I was reading through some of that stuff and I noticed there is a requirement of when you have a storefront that you need to have uh, the window, the glazing, you have to be able to see like, I think it was four foot eight into a building. And if you've noticed the requirements on a lot of these dispensaries are going in is that you can't have any viewing inside. There's already been several of them You've seen them on Main Street over by uh, Sylvester's, that one in the garage. Here. You know, they it's a it's a requirement, I think, of the CCC. But does that that overrides our 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 guidelines? 
No. So there are have been a few that you've reviewed. So we reviewed the one on Strong Avenue for that resonate. Um, there have been actually we just discovered one on Strong Avenue that um, they didn't submit the window. Um, there's an. This is what really bothers me about the CCC is their their it's their interpretation of the regulations. The regulations say they're not supposed to see product, so it's easy for for them to say you have to blank out the whole wall, you know, instead of really saying, well, what are we trying to hide here? Um, not to mention the fact that liquor stores don't have to do this. So I don't really understand why. <laughs> um, but so we've had quite a bit of discussion with applicants and the one on Strong Avenue, just they went and got their CCC permit. They didn't even apply for the window. Um, so that's gonna come before you because they've already put up their film on the window, even though it wasn't approved by central business. Um, so we still want that standard. We still think it's important for them to, um, uh, you know, we, I think it creates a blank wall, you know, when you, right. when you put up those window um, films. The one on Main Street by San, that was Sam's Pizzeria, I think they, did, they have an internal shade and we can't regulate the shades. Uh -huh. um, so, but it's, uh, definitely a point of contention. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just going to scroll down here to the building stuff and then try to pull up the, your guidelines to show to side, do a side by side. Um, so is the design on for our regulations for safety purposes? No. Uh, so you mean for central business purposes? Why do we have like um, a fifty percent glazing, or yeah, or is it for? It's aesthetics? more like um, just public-private interface and being able to feel like you know you're walking in an active street space. You're not walking against a blank wall, and you know there's more visual interest and desire for people to walk if they can. You know if there's something interesting to look at and you can see inside the commercial mm. space. Um, which is obviously what the CCC is trying to prevent, but maybe it's not appropriate then for downtown to have <laughs> retail marijuana. Yeah, um, they, they just don't want 18 year olds and people under 18 see the product, I guess. I guess, I guess if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's kind of what the problem is that led to this whole thing anyway. <laughs> um, While you were scrolling, one of the things you passed was the Smith College Art Museum. And um, I would not, I'm basically that's a huge blank wall. And in my uh, opinion, not a good example of something that we're looking to replicate downtown. Um, so I, and but by, by its placement where it is, it kind of implies that with a civic building, you could, you could get permission to do something like that, which is um, basically a large part of what the problem with the registry building is. And you know that could turn into a civic building. So I, 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 would, I would not wanna use that particular thing as an example of something that we're aiming for, which it seems to be. Yeah, the idea isn't what we're aiming for. It's examples of what a civic building is and how it's different architecturally from other office buildings or commercial buildings or residential buildings. And it's really intended to say, these are very different buildings and we should treat them differently and they should only be allowed in very, um, limited circumstances um, because of that, because they don't have, they don't always have that inviting uh, facade. Well, by, <laughs> by, putting, by putting the Smith Art Museum where it is, I think you're implying that something like that might be approved downtown, which um, would not, in my opinion, be a good idea. 
Okay. So it's something to think about as you, while you're, you might want to, something you might want to change in the. Um, okay. Well, I noticed further, there was a chart um, about entries and um, like, and I noticed like churches and I believe civic buildings are exempt from a lot of those um, requirement, requirements, like entry requirements, correct? Um, so the church buildings, I'll have to go to- um, I noticed there's some, a lot, an exemption for those type of buildings. I, I just thought. Yeah, because um, you can't have, you're not going to have a retail street entrance on a church building. So that's what I think that, that you're referring to. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the K. I know it starts. With, I think I may have passed it. I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. So additional building design standard guidelines for CB core district. So um, these are um, the, so all of the uh, previous ones that we scrolled through would be applicable throughout and the planning board would be using those. Um, but these are very specific. These are basically taken from your guidelines. And what I'll do now is, um, uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to, um, my menu's in the way, so I'm gonna have to, move this down so I can see what I need to do. Um, just gonna pull up, oh, it didn't let me do this. I'm gonna need to stop share for a second. I was gonna pull up a, <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. While you're doing that, Carolyn, I don't know if you can talk while you're doing that. But um, yeah. when I was going through the guidelines, I I guess I, I was getting caught up kind of earlier in it, um, right where it started with the buildings. Um, and it seems like we should be looking at the whole building portion of it and making sure that it aligns. And I think some of the comments I sent you in particular had to do with some diagrams that were about facades. Yeah. Um, which was which was earlier, it was on E, it was in section E. So okay. I guess I just wonder how those relate. Um, because those diagrams on on page 20 look a lot like some of our diagrams. Yeah. And there's also some words there that architecturally were not quite right. Yeah. That one. Right. So, oops, not facades, you said. Yeah, no, facades. Okay. Oh, right, facades, right. I saw, I heard E and then I saw F for facades. And I was like, oh, that's the wrong section. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, yes. So, um, uh, so there were some um, terms in here that you think that were not um, consistent with sort of That's standard, amazing. yeah. Yeah, well, uh, like for example, the, what they're, they're calling a pediment over the window, which is really a lintel. A pediment mm -hmm. is a more decorative, right. um, either curved or yeah. uh, gable form. Um, and a freeze band isn't in the middle of a building, it's up at the top at the cornice. So just, and then column and piers are usually freestanding as opposed right. to a, a pilaster. Yeah. Um, I know that we do use the term pier um, in ours, but I, I guess getting things, and I'm more thinking of this as um, people outside, you know, architects coming in and, just having the terms being consistent. Yeah. Um, so I will take your those specific comments from your email and fix this. Um, um, 
but then even just like the discussion about bays, I think we do we have that in our guidelines? I feel like we do. Yes, yes. you do. So um, now I'm gonna have to. Um, so bays, I'm sorry, it's gonna scroll both at the same time. If anybody knows how, how to stop that, um, let me see. We're only seeing the form based code. Oh, you are? You're not yeah, seeing the other one. We don't have the other one, no. Oh, weird. Okay. So let me just stop this. Uh, okay. Oh, synchronous scrolling. Huh, there you go. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to go to the guidelines then so you can see that this isn't working as seamlessly as I thought it was going to. <laughs> um, so now you see the guidelines? Right. Okay. And yes, you have. Um, I think it's guideline two. Here we go. Right, right. So height and width. Um, so I guess, yeah, so they've com combined. Um, so here, I think it's simplified talking about building height and width. And I feel, and I think over in the um, guidelines, it talks about division into bays um, in the context of sort of dividing up that height and width, right? Yeah, and I guess what I'm saying is that, well, their diagram is really clear. Yeah. <laughs> and it has, um, I, it, the situations like that, I would say we should just have the same graphic. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, so that's, this is where, um, so if you all, um, so I'm just going to go back to um, this other sh share, go back to the um, guidelines. And so what I've just confirmed, I sent an, a quick email to Dodson Flinker just to say, I, I, I think we had already talked about, you, you know, using the, making the documents consistent. So I don't think they're going to have a problem with us copying and pasting that into the guidelines. But I agree, this was, the, you know, this would be the updated version, essentially, and then referencing. Um, I think it's better to reference than have the actual, you know, heights in, or measurements in there. So, um, yes, I think that makes sense. So after, um, after these new guidelines are past, then we will go back and recorrect our guidelines to match well um, diagrams and examples. I'd like to have it as parallel a process as possible. So there's not like a gap in what you're, you know, potentially reviewing. Um, so I'm working on the updates now. Um, okay. trying to juggle both of those at the same time. Um, I also, we had started working on including, you know, a list. You've always had a list of building classifications. Um, and um, a few years ago, as part of the update, um, I think you all agreed that it would be helpful to have the list of building classifications and then a picture of that building right. so that it's yeah. clear what at, you know, instead of just the address, the actual building. So we're trying to fill in those gaps now um, with um, the core, at least for the core district, because that's where the different building types um, are important for your review. You know, you treat different buildings differently. Um, so these, um, uh, so in this, area there's also another discussion so we were just talking about bays so this is another area that's um 
has a discussion about bays that's just for the CB core. So this would also be where I'd want to make sure that there's not duplication or slight, you know, almost duplication and then creates confusion, um, both internally to this document, but also to the central business guidelines. So, cause there's another section here about proportions and bays. Um, uh, so I think it's gonna be sort of a, a merger of these <coughs> things into the, um, into your guidelines, sorry. <coughs> um, so this, this um, so again, um, the concepts and the, um, there are a few, there's some things that have been um, I think maybe what makes sense is, and maybe you guys don't have time to do this tonight, but so just tell me, um, I just want to see how long, how many pages this is. Um, I want to make sure that, um, I think there were some changes to dimensions or added dimensions. So for example, the parapet must be a minimum of two feet in height and maximum of six feet. I think, I think we intentionally went through the guidelines first and grabbed all the details there, but there may have been some that were massaged. So um, particularly for, I know there was, I know I had some internal discussions with um, our consultants about, you know, some of these, I think were too extreme. Like I can't imagine um, a parapet six feet. So um, I don't know if that's something that should be addressed or, um, or and I'm probably looking to the designers and architects on the team um, to, um, tell me otherwise, but there, in this section in particular, it probably needs to be truth tested. So I don't know if I, if um, I can give you all homework just to look at this section, or if you want to go through that now, page by page. Well, I don't think I have the bandwidth to go through it page by page right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean the whole document. I just meant this section, but I understand that as well. So about um, the bandwidth, even for this section. <laughs> no, I would, I'd be willing to review that and then, you know, just email you my comments or, you know, we yeah. can do it as homework. Or do we, do we have another meeting coming up or? We don't, but that doesn't mean you can't schedule one. Um, I just, I want to, I don't want to be greedy with your time, <laughs> um, but um, I know, and then just for process sake, you know, as I said, it, once this gets introduced to council, um, it'll still go out for public hearing. So there's still opportunities to comment, but it would be good to have like detailed things that maybe don't make sense to have them before this gets introduced. So if you wanna do this in the context of a meeting, I'd be happy to um, try to schedule another meeting um, where we just focus on this section um, or something like that. Um, well, and so, I, think it's, I think having the task of the homework of reviewing these, these two things together um, and then coming to a meeting with our comments might be better. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And is there any way, I mean, would anybody be interested in doing Google Sheets and we could make all make our comments on the Google Sheets so you don't have to go back and forth entering information? I don't know if that's allowed. Is that allowed? Um, it's probably, A, I don't think it's allowed because it's outside the context of public meeting, but B, I think um, my head, I think it would be a problem to use Google Sheets with this formatted document. Um, so although I can understand how it might be easier for some manipulation, I think it'd be technically difficult um, to do it in a Google format. 
because of this software that, I mean, right now it's a Word document, but it also sort of moves around a, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so Karen, Karen, one of the things in terms of reviewing the two documents, the revised guidelines that you sent us um, over the weekend, it, they, there, it seems like there's pieces that are missing, like there are blank pages and it seems like there are images missing. Um, so I don't know what happened to the formatting. Yeah, it definitely is not a finished product. I don't, I will double check. I don't think there was anything substantive that was missing, except there are sort of placeholders for make sure I do X, Y, or Z and put that in here. So that may be what you're seeing, but I'll, I, that's what I'm working through this week is to um, pull all that together. Um, and um, so I'm just trying to think of realistically if I could get you a clean version. I also inserted the map just so it's a little clearer, but obviously that might change if, you know, based on conversation. Um, uh, so would you guys want to think, oh, well, let me ask you this. Do you have any other comments about this document before we sort of start thinking about maybe another date to meet? Could I make a suggestion? As, would it make sense to to divide up among the group, like and for you to assign each of us a certain section of a new document and then look for inconsistencies with the old guidelines? And then, so that, that would make the workload more manageable for us if we just, if we weren't looking at the whole thing, but we were just looking at one one section of it. And you could just uh, assign us a section and then we could um, compare that section to what our original guidelines were, offer comments, and then that would give you something to work with. Does that make sense? I mean, I'd be happy to do that. I don't know what other people but feel. Isn't it just this section 12 that's really just relevant to our guidelines that we need to edit or look at closely? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, how many pages? I didn't look. You're counting, but how many pages is that? Like, I looked at it, and it looks like there's buildings that's applicable to our um, to our committee is buildings, pre-existing buildings, and central business district. And central business di district is between page 62 and 85, so about 20 pages. And then pre-existing is only one page, and then the buildings is 16 through 40. So I'm thinking those those are the things that we should initially review and it's not too much you, you said page 16 through 40 and then what was the other one um 60 to 61 so that's pre-existing buildings okay. and then the last one 62 to 85 which is central business district and, and then, okay, and then 16 through 40. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think maybe even the pre-existing buildings, you might not, there might not be as much um, concern about overlap. Um, so even if you were just to look at the building sections, you know, 21.7, um, and then the central business, um, requirements, which is that subsection K, I think. Um, so if you would love, I mean, I could email you sort of, um, if it makes it easier, I can send you an email with those sections. That would be good. Okay. And then everything else to the attachments would be great, just so it's all in one place or, or the links, whichever. Okay. You mean like the maps or? Um... Yeah, the, uh, what we were just looking at, those, those um, bylaws, I mean, the, um, the form-based code, the draft and our existing guidelines. I know you oh, said- Oh, yeah, yeah, much, sure, but... yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um...
Oops. Okay. Um, do you, is there, um, do Tuesdays work for you guys still? Or do you want to do another day? Okay. Um, actually, sometimes I have meetings on Tuesdays. Okay. Uh, well, do you want to um, look at your calendars now to see what day, if it's even if it's not a Tuesday, um, that's Wednesday, fine. They're pretty good Wednesdays. I'm I'm kind of open. Okay. Wednesdays are not good for me. That's fine. Wednesday and, and I could go back to Tuesday. You know, it's kind of yeah. a way to get out of another meeting. <laughs> what about Mondays? Mondays are fine. And I'm not, and, and this is just for the special meeting. I'm not yeah. suggesting we change yeah. the other one, but. Um, what's going to, excuse me, what's going to happen? I mean, this the planning board meeting, are they just going to review this like we did? They're going to read through the document know. and have public comment? Yeah, I don't think meeting? they're going to get in the nitty gritty like you guys are. But what's the uh, calendar of this whole approach? When do they <laughs> want to try to get this coat passed? And when is like other other deadlines for the final document or whether when the vote's going to happen or there's no deadlines uh, really they're internal deadlines because we know there are applicants out there that are in the current central business that really want to do residential projects and we've been holding them back so we really want to start moving this forward um but there's not a hard and fast deadline so our goal was really to try to introduce it in March that then kicks off the official public hearing process and it's going to get referred out to city council committee. It's going to get referred out to planning board for official planning for public hearing. Then it comes back to city council for a vote. So we tell people that it typically takes four, four months because of those scheduling to go through city council approval process. So even if we start in March, you know, it's gonna be June, July, probably. Right. Um, so, but we, the goal really is just to keep it moving forward. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but we, I haven't submitted this to the city solicitor yet. <laughs> so it's a lot to, for the city solicitor to review. So that's gonna take a really long time in and of itself. Um, so, you know, I, I'm only, t I mean, the timelines I'm telling you are like, what would be great <laughs> across my fingers. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I mean, if you guys are, um, if you think, I don't know what you think about February 7th, it's a Monday, if you want to, would that give you enough time? Because I know next Monday, I don't think I'm available. Um, the 14th, or are you saying like next week? In two uh, weeks. That's two weeks. So yeah. it's two weeks, basically, the February 7th. I'm what happened to the week. church meeting? Is that, there's no date yet on that? No, it was continued till March. Um, oh, right. March 1st, actually. Would it, um, is there any possibility we could do it the, the week of the 14th? The week of the seventh is, um, I've got another big committee commitment. Okay. Um, or is that getting late? The 14th. Um, no, I mean, we could do it that week. Let me just look. Um, 14th. Oh, I have another meeting on the 14th, but. I mean, well, I'm open for the Tuesdays the 15th, 15th or 16th. Yeah. The 15th would be good for me as well. Are you okay with that, Melissa? Yeah, definitely. The 15th? Okay. 15th is okay for me. Yeah, me too. Okay. Do you want to do 6.30 on the 15th? Yes. Okay. So you'll forward us you're going to break out this document to just what is relevant to us and put that in an email and we can review that. So we're ready for this meeting. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And we can Shall we in, in, um, email be, beforehand. 
Email you can email to me, but not to everybody. Okay. Right. Um, let me just go back to this building section. Oh, I have to go to the table of contents. Uh, okay, 21.7 is great. Okay. Okay, so 6.30 on February 15th. And in the meantime, I'll try to get something out actually by the end of this week, just so you have time um, to start looking at those sections. That would be very helpful, of course. Um, and um, yeah, so, and then in the meantime, um, you know, I'll look, relook at the maps and probably bring you uh, another, a, a revised layout for the maps um, for you to talk about too. Um, Can I get a motion to close the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Are we at that point? Sure. Whatever you guys want. Motion to close the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.